the goal. It could be too far. No, he's thinking. Oh, what a catch! It puts a spicy forehand out in front of Naomi Morsilla. Woo for the win in Canada. Darren Woo! Santos with the layout grab. Oh, that fantastic grab. The claws of Chapa. Canada just became the world champion. Yo, Canada and the rest of the world, you're listening to the Hakane Podcast. I'm your host, Theo Wan, flying solo once again. Uh, gonna be talking some Ultimate Canada news early on in this episode, and then going into the recap of Prez Day as well as OJ4UC Indoors 4 Tournament uh, for the juniors to qualify for the Canadian Tournament. Uh, so that's what's going on in this docket. Got a subs only for you as well, subscribers, so you can stay tuned for that. Uh, but just a quick update, you know, personal update as, as I always do. I uh, had a chance to host the swimming championships uh, for Ontario. So all the Ontario universities gathered for the swimming championships. And it's just a unique beast out here swimming. Um, swimming parents are very different. Um, you know, I've been to college nationals where I've seen the parents uh, come up with the spreads of food and the tables and stuff. And I don't know, it just reminds me of, you know, soccer, soccer parents and things like that or, or a basketball tournament. But swimming is just very unique because at least for this, um, competition there are two sessions per day uh one's a prelim so you actually have to qualify from the prelims to get to the to the finals and the finals only has 16 people in each discipline so men's 200 freestyle will only have 16 people but they could have so that's two heats an a final and b final but they could have like six heats to start so if you're a swimmer you might be only swimming twice in the prelims and you might get eliminated there and that's it like for the day so you don't swim at night. You're just cheering on your teammates. And there were some parents. I saw them every day at the pool. So they're, you know, might be watching their kids swim two races um, in a span of like the, the two, three hour session. So just a very interesting sport. Um, obviously, those who don't come from individual sport backgrounds won't, won't understand it just like myself. Um, just be able to train like the same discipline over and over. Um, talking to some of the Brock swimmers about how, you know, you could do the, the 50 freestyle and get remarkably different times each time you do it. Uh, it's just very interesting. I, it's, I don't know how to compare it to Frisbee because you can throw a flick and I guess depending on the wind, it could also travel different ways. So maybe it's a little bit similar in that sense. But um, yeah, individual sports are just very uh, interesting to me. Um, and just like how young people start in swimming, a lot of these seniors have been posting on their social media about how, you know, they're hanging up um, – their bathing suits after, you know, 15 years of swimming. And I'm just imagining a day when university Frisbee players will say the same for their senior games that they, uh, they've they been playing for 15 years. Eventually, we'll get to that point where kids are starting earlier and earlier. I also think that's one of the joys of Ultimate is that people can play uh, into, later, into their later years. So, like, after university, there's some sports where that's just not really that feasible. Um, I think swimming is a little bit like one of them track as well, where you can do some of like the adult circuit, but it's not the same organization uh, and the same camaraderie as university uh, in that way. So anyways, just a little tangent to start off the podcast here. Uh, we're going to jump into the news now, talk about Ultimate Canada. Some news and notes coming right at you. We now have breaking news. So you may have seen this on the social media sphere. Uh, B Ultimate, uh, the, the official kit provider, uh, was doing some good stuff, showing kind of the insides and outs of what was happening in training camp. Was told it was Friday to Sunday of this past week. Uh, U20s were there as well, apparently, uh, out in Florida. So I know the weather wasn't the best because I saw some stuff where it was raining. But kind of cool to have all the, the players be able to take some time off work or school and get together and train. Um, I know they'll probably be going to some tournaments at some point to, to get some reps in. But, uh, you know, the U.S. still hasn't made their team. So I think, Canada, you're ahead of the game. I know other countries probably ahead of that as well. But ahead of the game in that sense. So that's pretty cool. And uh, once again, always wishing the best of luck to all the national teams here uh, as, they, as they get ready. Uh, some other Ultimate Canada news. Um, I don't normally talk about staff departures, but this was on their website. So I'm just going to bring it up. So Troy Weston's no longer part of Ultimate Canada. She has been there for two years. I had a chance to work with her for multiple CUC, so that's why I kind of do want to bring it up. I want to thank Troy for her time and leadership um, when I was commentating in 2022. 
um, she was part of that. So, um, yeah, she's been a big part of the Frisbee community and, um, that's the only reasoning we got. So that's what we're going to go off of. Um, she's no longer with ultimate Canada. And, uh, on top of that, now, um, this came out at the time of this recording today that they are filling a role for events managers, seniors and masters. I know they hired a high performance and you can see past COVID they've hired some more people like Leanne and then Sarah in communication. So slowly getting back to normal. I know it's been a, a few years, but it takes some time, especially when, um, money's not coming in the same way as, uh, other national governing bodies. Um, I think most people in the audience are aware of this, but um, Ultimate Canada doesn't get the same funding that like basketball and and to some of this is like kind of obvious to you, but um, they don't, they're not recognized as a, as a sport in the same way or recognized as a sport in general. And so they don't get the funding that other uh, governing bodies get. And so that actually puts a, a hard tax on some of the resources and things they can do because uh, they're not getting that government funding. So I, I believe some people are still working on that. Uh, I know I think in some provincial organizations, they're trying to work on that too, to get it recognized by kind of their provincial sport governing bodies. So if you're into sport management, which is the program I came out of for a year, uh, this might be of interest to you. But anyways, they are hiring an event manager for senior and masters. Those events are coming up. Um, kind of surprising, honestly, they, they're not hiring this a little bit earlier just because that event is, like I said, on the horizon. It's end of July and uh, middle of August. So. Uh, it's coming pretty fast and furious. Um, you can probably do this remote, but they're saying you should probably be in Ottawa. Um, I always say this, like, because we saw this with a high performance manager who doesn't come from Ultimate. I think it's kind of cool when Ultimate organizations get people outside of the sport so they're not just like in this funnel and they can think of some other things outside of the box potentially. So um, I'm not saying Ultimate people don't apply for this, but I'm saying, I guess if you're not an Ultimate person, you're probably not listening to this. But if you know someone that's good for the job, you should just tell them to apply. Because even though they might not know Ultimate, they'll get to know some of the nuances and stuff. But it'll be good to get some different uh, perspectives. So that's a quick news. Uh, main event, I'm uh, going to talk about Prez Day first, which is a tournament out in San Diego. And then going to talk about OJ4UC as well. After the break, we'll talk about that. This is Mike Haddock, founder of Haddock Sport Performance and strength and conditioning coach for Ultimate Canada. And you're listening to the Huck and A podcast, your coast to coast guide for all things Canadian Ultimate. All right, so Prez Day took place. So two teams went, no teams on the women's side. So we're only going to focus on the men's division here. Uh, two teams went, uh, UBC and UVic. We'll start with the higher seed UBC Thunderbirds. They went into this tournament, the five seed. And so they were in Pool D along with a team that I had a chance to commentate last year at Nationals, California Ursa Major. As well, they had their Northwest rivals, Oregon State. And then in their pool, they also have a team that made it to nationals last year in California, Santa Cruz Slugs. So they got a pretty like tough pool to, to kind of start things off in their tournament. This tournament's a little bit different because it's a, fr- a Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So um, Saturday's pool play, Sunday's power pools. And then Monday is kind of your finals consolation bracket type deal. But on Friday, if you don't do well, you actually just get relish into like the lower power pools and you can't get out. So you can actually like move up. And uh, so unfortunately that fate befalls UBC. They lose, I believe on universe from what I've been told, uh, 13, 12 to California to start their day off. So I'm not a big fan of the scheduling of them playing the top seed in their pool first, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, then they go on to defeat Santa Cruz slugs, 10, eight. And then they got up on the live stream here, taking on Oregon state with their miss Oregon state's mishmash jerseys. Don't love that. Um, check out the game. Uh, on Ulti World's video library. UBC actually gets a break to go up 6-5, uh, but then Oregon State, there's a crazy catch in there somewhere uh, where they can, um, they break back and eventually uh, get it back on serve out of half. Oregon State actually breaks early out of half and UBC uh, is able to fight back. I like the resilience shown there, uh, forcing Universe. Um, they actually get on Universe. You should check it out. I think Ulti World will post at some point. Um, I do help edit some of the things, so maybe I can get that out faster. But um, there's some good help defense on a, on a, a deep shot. Uh, UBC works it all the way down the field. Uh, Victor Tiet, I believe that that's him because based on the roster, he tries a little spin move, gets free, but the throw is just a little too far. Um, and then Oregon State works it up and scores. So uh, cover your ears, UBC fans. But uh, UBC goes down uh, one and two in pool play. So that actually... Um, the fate that befalls them is that they can't go up into that like upper power pools bracket. 
The same can't be said about Uvic, though. Um, Uvic also goes one and two, but based on some score diff, they actually end up in the power pool. So they were in a pool with UCLA Smog, Oregon Ego, the top seed. That's a top seed in their pool. Uh, Victoria was the 11th seed, the third seed in their pool. Uh, UCLA was the second seed and then sixth seed overall. And then California, Santa Barbara, Black Tide as well. So let's take a look at their results. So to start things off, they beat UCLA 12A. That's a big win for them. Um, they fall to Oregon by four. And then they also drop a game by two to Santa Barbara. Uh, UCLA beat Santa Barbara by three. But because UVic beat UCLA by four, they actually get to go up into the power pools. So uh, that is the Sunday games. So they're in a power pool with Colorado, uh, California, and Washington Sun Dodgers. So a couple, well, one, Northwest phone, Washington there. UVic plays Colorado. You can check that game out of the live stream power pool uh, matchup. Uh, UVic kind of goes point for point early on. I'm going to say early on in the game, but Colorado does pull away a little bit, uh, taking half 8-5. Uh, there's a nice flick blade they should check out. A hold out a half by Max Petnuzo. Uh, nice little move there. But uh, a couple of breaks. Early in the second half, kind of does UVic in. They can't really like get the momentum back. And so they go down 13-7. Uh, they actually go 0-3 in power pools. So uh, not a good fate there. They drop that 13-7 matchup I just mentioned. 12-6 uh, to Washington as well as a 10-6 loss to California. So um, you, you move up and you play the good teams. Uh, and it's going to be tougher games. But that's the the what happens to UVic there. UBC, on the other hand, like I said, they move into the kind of the lower power pool. So they had uh, UC San Diego Air Squids, California Santa Barbara Black Tide, the, the team that was in the pool with UVic. And then California Irvine Nightlife. Uh, they're the last seed in this tournament. Uh, UBC takes care of them with ease. 15-8 is the score. So they kind of get back on the, the winning ways there. Um, and they also beat UC San Diego 10-9. UC San Diego hasn't really been rel- – I think they – we're in a game to go many, many years ago. I remember watching a video in Ulti World, but they haven't really been nationally relevant since. And same thing with Santa Barbara on the men's side. UBC goes 3-0, and but like I said, based on how the thing's set up, they actually can't move up uh, into this like top pool. Uh, UVic uh, looking to play for uh, the fifth place semis here. So they actually lose to Washington. Yeah, they play Washington again, it looks like. That's kind of a weird setup. It kind of threw me off for a second to see that. Uh, but yeah, they play Washington, they lose 11-9, and then they uh, lose again, this time to Utah in a close game, 11-10, Zion Curtin. I believe they made Nationals recently, so at some point. So they're a good team as well. But UVic finishes eighth overall in this tournament. Uh, they get the one win over UCLA and then lose out after that. But because that one win was by the margin it was, they are able to finish on the top eight. But uh, not probably the best showing that they want to have, but uh, probably some some good lessons learned there. Uh, for UBC, they they can't go as they can't go any higher than ninth, so they're in the ninth place semis. They lose to the Utah State Scotsmen, who were at nationals last year. Um, they lose eleven nine, and they uh, bounce back to beat California San Diego nine eight. So they finish eleventh, um, seeded five. So definitely not where they thought they would be. Um, once again, those two universe point losses early on, on day one, kind of with the tournament format unforgiving. So they, they won some big games on the second day against maybe some more inferior competition. And then, um, weren't able to kind of seal it with the ninth place when they settled for 11th. Um, I believe some of those teams will probably be at Stanford event. I know UBC women's is going, I expect UVic as well, uh, there on the women's side. And then there's Northwest challenge as well on their schedule before conferences regionals and then the big dance the big show nationals uh once again this is my always psa to those who are on the east or maybe even manitoba if you're going to some tournaments let us know let me know because uh yeah i don't i don't know if you're going i only you don't actually get to see a lot of the who's going certain big tournaments like smoky mountain invite they'll tell you but uh just let let me know so that uh i can talk about it all right cool so we're jumping into the other event that happened this past week, which is the OJ4UC. So uh, for those kind of on the west side of the country, you know on the east side, this is a big kind of format is the fours. Um, kind of fast-paced action, lots going on. So there were 10 teams at this tournament, only two qualify. So 
The teams were as follows. OJ Cup, which is the Ottawa team. Chain Reaction, I believe they're out of Durham region. Elites had four teams, Z, X, Y, and underscore. Uh, Camp X, I believe that's out of Peterborough. Tuck A and Tuck B, so Toronto Ultimate Club having two teams. And then tragically Flick out of where I used to live last year, Kingston, Ontario. So, um, yeah, that, that's kind of a, a fun little thing here. So, I'm just trying to get a, a, a sense of the format here. There were two teams that basically didn't have a chance to make it from the get-go because it starts out with quarterfinals on Saturday. I believe this is a one day or so. Kind of have to compress things early. So in the quarterfinals, the way that it was seeded, uh, OJ Cup plays tragically flick. And this, I don't think this scores a typo, but man, 34-1. Um, Ottawa, maybe you could have let Kingston get a few points here. But a 34 ones a scoreline. That is tough. I don't think that's fun, to be honest, for anyone because it's just a huge blowout. Elites Y takes down Tuck A, 25-7. Elites X by four over Camp X, 18-14. And then Elites Z defeating Chain Reaction, 16-12. Uh, OJ Cup taking on one of the Elite squads wins 26-5. So once again, not close. Whereas the other two Elites teams, X and Z, I don't know how much split squad they were. They, they kind of stacked one squad. But Elite Z wins 15-5. Uh, OJ Cup does take the final at 325 local time. They win 2013. So there are your champions. I believe they won last year as well. Actually, I don't even think they had a tournament last year, but they uh they did pretty well last year in the tournament. I know they're they graduated some people that we've definitely talked about for U20s and other things, but uh they're primed to, to make another run against you know the prime penguins. So uh, gotta watch out for them. Then there was a second place bracket, so you can work all your all the way up. Um, we saw Elites X and Chain Reaction make it kind of to the top of this bracket with Chain Reaction winning. And so Chain Reaction takes on Elite Z, who just lost the qualifying game one, the final. And you know, I like to steal this from Charlie Eisenhood, the lose Lucia. Unfortunately, Elites Z does just that. They lose the final and then they lose the qualifying game to Chain Reaction 13-12. I have good authority that this game ended, I don't want to say controversial, but it's just the four's rules, which is like the the horn went as like the play was happening. Or I think the throw, now I'm muddled, muddled on the details if actually the throw went up when the, the whistle went. But either way, the point was still to be happening and it was called off. So yeah, that's, uh, yeah, okay. I'm reading it now. I'm reading the note. Elites was down by one and the whistle went just before they were about to score to tie it. So um, that is tough, but that's the rule. In subs only, I'm going to talk about adjusting some rules for fours, in my opinion, to make things a little bit better. Um, so that would be in the subs only. But uh, yeah, Chain Reaction wins. They take it. They're going to Nationals. They choose to accept the bid. I think they would have already had to, but um, it's really cool to have a circuit like this for the juniors. Uh, you know, I'm a big proponent of fours. I've talked about this many times. I think it's just a good way to get a lot of people touches. Even if you're a deep defender, cutter, uh, it would be good for you to get some experience guarding people in these small spaces, uh, trying some different throws because it's indoor. You can throw a little scuba, a little lefties and stuff, some some flick blades. Just uh, work on your pinpoint throwing as well. So love that there's so many juniors programs. I know mostly based out of Toronto, but hey, we got we saw Kingston. Uh, Durham region, and then of course Ottawa. Ottawa, I've said before they're on the call. They're not. They're not just coming. They've arrived. I really think that they've supplanted. I know. Uh, trying, you know, the the Toronto and me is hurt, hurt, hurt to say this, but uh, Ottawa's really supplanted Toronto uh, right now and kind of developing the talent we've seen with the U twenties and other uh, junior team selections where a lot of these players are coming from. It's from Ottawa. So kudos to all the people there, the hard work they put in during COVID and just out of it. Uh, for developing the kids that they have and, and seeing the the fruits of their labor here. I think a lot of other cities can learn a bit from that and are hoping to emulate some of that model. I know Toronto's working its way back up. They still have these like multiple teams coming out. Um, so uh, you just got to keep rolling with kind of the ebbs and flows of a program. So don't give up Toronto. You'll get back there. You know what I'm saying? But uh, Ottawa right now, has been really dominant. And of course, Vancouver, we've seen it. And then Winnipeg continues to, um, to be strong as well. So for a lot of these players, you'll see them at the Canadian high schools. 
Uh, I believe that's in Toronto. So you can check that out if you're interested in that. Um, that concludes the episode for today. Uh, you, it's technically off season. There's still some stuff happening, but going to be some shorter episodes coming at you. Uh, so thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, yeah, club season around the corner. I've, I've seen some trial announcements. I've seen preseason scrimmages going on. So get those interest forms in uh, to your teams that you're uh, wanting to try out for. Uh, get your reps in. Get the cleats dusted off because uh, the season's just around the corner. First term in what, like early May, I think. Tryouts happening in April, less than two months away. So if you haven't been training, now's your time uh, to do it because uh, other people have been. So you don't want to fall behind. Anyways, subscriber only. Going to be talking about some new fours rules and stuff that I have in mind. If you're not a subscriber, you should be. You can watch all the good college footage, club footage, everything that's ha- in Ulti World's video library. Check it all out. But until uh, until next time, we'll see you later, okay? Peace.